Hey, what is up, you guys? Um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie. If you don't know me, it's been a while. It has been a hot, hot minute. Um, if you follow any of my social media, you will know. Um, I'm currently in Ecuador studying abroad. Um, I've been here since August 15th. Um, and then I leave in a month, like literally like exactly a month is kind of crazy actually. Um, but I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk to you guys about my experience learning Spanish. Um, as you know, I was a linguistics major um, for about a year. I took a lot of linguistics classes. Languages have always kind of been like something really cool, something that I've always enjoyed. I've always, I remember like in those like scholastic like book fair catalog things that you would get as a kid like I remember like I like made my mom like order me this like learn French CD and then like um I remember when I was in like sixth grade I was in gifted like this like gifted and talented program where we got to go and like pick a topic and like do an independent study on that topic um I picked French so like I don't know why I really liked French as a kid um but then I like obviously never got anywhere. I don't speak a word of French, <laughs> like, so. Um, but I just kind of wanted to outline for you guys like my experience learning Spanish, kind of what I have done to achieve the level of fluency that I have. I guess without any further ado, let's get into it. Um, so I first started learning Spanish when I was 15. I was a freshman in high school. And at my school, it was required that you take two years of Spanish to graduate. Spanish was the only foreign language we offered. I went to an absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny high school. Um, at that high school, I actually went to three high schools. Um, but at that specific high school, my class was like 32 kids or something. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it was required that you take two years of Spanish to graduate. So, I was really hype to take Spanish, actually. I really wanted to take it. I had wished that my school had offered it in middle school, but alas, they did not, so. Um, I started taking it, and then I took two years in high school, so my freshman and my sophomore year, I took high school Spanish one and two, um, and in those classes, I kind of just learned, I learned the present tense, um, I learned a little bit of the past tense, and then some, like, some grammar points like the ser reflexivo, um, por versus para, ser versus estar, like things like that, um, things that are pretty basic that like you kind of need to build your foundation. And so I did that for two years and then I actually left that high school that I was at and I went and I was a United States Senate page for a semester. So basically that means I lived in Washington DC, I went to school there, I lived there. <laughs> um, and I worked in the United States Senate. Um, if you guys want a video completely about that, um, leave me a comment down below and letting me know. Because I think that would be a really fun video to make just about all about my experiences with that program. Um, but if you guys aren't interested, I won't make it. But if you are, then I will. So during that semester, I was so just absolutely strapped for time. Like we literally would like, I'd wake up at 5.30 every day, go to class at six. Like it was crazy, it was insane. Um, and so I didn't take Spanish at all while I was there. Um, and then when I came back from doing that, from having that experience, I actually transferred, transferred schools. So I was actually at another high school. So that's high school number three. Um, and this one was even tinier than my first high school. My graduating class was 11. Um, it was an alternative high school. I absolutely adored it. I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out alternative high schools, alternative education options. If you really aren't digging your public school option, um, I think they're great. I absolutely adored it. But anyway, I was lucky enough to be able to, so the high school that I transferred to, my alternative high school, they didn't offer any foreign language at their high school. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be able to, in the mornings, go to the community college and take a Spanish class there. So at community college, I was taking first year, second semester Spanish. And that focused a lot on past tense, um, on kind of advancing grammar, 
but mostly I remember it being a lot of past tense. I remember in that class I had to do a presentation on celebrations and so I talked about all the weddings in Game of Thrones. I remember because I just found the presentation on my computer the other day and so that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, so after that experience, I that was the highest level of Spanish that was offered to me in my town um, through my educational circumstances. So after that, I actually didn't get to take any more Spanish. So that was at the end of my junior year of high school. Um, so my senior year, I had nothing. I didn't take any Spanish, no language, nothing, um, which kind of sucked. It was kind of sad, actually. So I took a break for the better part of a year. And then I actually was fortunate enough to be able to graduate high school early. So I graduated high school in March. So I spent a month living here in Ecuador, in Quito, um, volunteering at an equine assisted therapy clinic. Um, that was fantastic. I really loved it. I really came here with the intent to speak a lot of Spanish. I didn't speak any Spanish while I was here. Almost none. Um, I was living in like a, the family that I was living with, they were like serial hosts for volunteers. And so I lived with a British girl, I lived with a Scottish girl, a Norwegian girl, we all spoke English at the house, They, my family spoke English to us, like, it was just a lot of, it was a lot of English constantly. And then, and then I would go to my volunteer placement, and then nobody there spoke any English, um, but like my Spanish was like not that great at the time, so I, we communicated very much, very minimally. Um, I remember like having to like mime, I said like one of the horses like kicked a tree or something and I remember having to like mime like kicked because I didn't know the word for it. Um, I remember I forgot the word for sheets once so I called it like the shirt of the bed. <laughs> like, um, just like kind of crazy things like that. Um, so I didn't really pick up a ton of Spanish here in Ecuador the first time I was here. Um, and then, so I got back, um, passed the whole summer at home, and then that fall I went off to university and I didn't take any Spanish classes. I kind of thought I was over it. I was like, oh, I've learned all that I can learn in a classroom. I don't need to take classes anymore. I'll just pick it up. That's so dumb. It's so dumb. <clears throat> Literally, that doesn't work. That's not how it works. So I didn't take classes for a full year, um, my freshman year of college. And then last year, my sophomore year, I decided to pick up a Spanish minor. So I started taking classes again. Um, I took a placement test and I actually tested into second year, second semester, but that class wouldn't have counted for anything for me. So I just didn't take it. And I just went straight into like the 300 third year level of Spanish and I was actually fine. So the first class that I took back was a grammar intensive, like, overview. It was, all we did was survey Spanish grammar. So we learned about the present, the past, the future, the subjunctive, uh, all the uses of say, uh, ser versus estar, por versus para, and like stuff like that in a very, very intensive format. Um, so that was a really good review for me, actually. I was really glad that, that was the first class that I took back. Um, the next semester I took a writing class and then I took a pronunciation class and I think those were both really really helpful. I would say probably that writing is still my weakest point. Uh, those dang accent marks. They just get me. Um, but the pronunciation class was super super interesting like as a at the time linguistics major and as somebody who has a vested interest in linguistics. Um, that was a super interesting class. I really loved that class. I loved the professor. Um, so I just really enjoyed it. Um, over the summer, I actually got a grant through my university to do um, like Skype conversations on Talk Abroad, which is a website. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. But basically you pay and then you get like half an hour Skype sessions with native speakers and you can talk about kind of whatever you want. Like if you have homework, you can like I don't know, like a lot of professors at my university will assign talk abroad sessions as homework, um, but I actually got a grant, so I got to do five of those sessions for free over the summer, which was, I would say that was probably like the best thing that I got to do before coming here to Ecuador, because it really just 
kind of got my confidence up, got me used to speaking, got me used to um, the kind of spontaneity of language and not just being like isolated in a classroom setting and being like, okay, today we're going to conjugate like AR ending verbs. Like, so I really enjoyed that. I got to do that over the summer, which was really nice, um, but I didn't really do a lot of studying before I came here. And then August 14th, I left my hometown and then I flew down here to Ecuador. Um, so I've been living here. I live with a host family. I have host parents and then I have a host brother and a host sister, but they're both adults. They're out of the house. Um, so it's really just me and my host parents in the house now. Um, and they don't really speak any English, which is fantastic for me. Um, so I guess I'll talk about it like kind of as a progression. So at first I came here and it was, I could have pretty basic conversations, but they weren't really that super spontaneous. I wasn't thinking in Spanish at all. Um, I was still like hearing Spanish, translating it to English, replying in English, translating it to Spanish and then replying. So conversations were pretty slow. Um, so that was kind of difficult at first. I would say that went away after a couple of days just because of the amount of Spanish that I was intaking. Um, and then, so I attend university here. So I take classes. Three of my classes are like Spanish for foreigners. And so they're with all um, people whose first language is not Spanish, whose second language is not Spanish, who are not fluent in Spanish. Um, and that's been really great because the professors, they know, like, our levels in those classes are very varied. There are some people who, what I would put at maybe like a lower intermediate, and then there are some people who I would put like, at like basically almost fluent. Um, so we have a super mixed level, but that those classes have been really nice because those professors have been doing this for a long time. And so they know the struggles that we face as Typically, native English speakers who are learning to speak Spanish at a relatively high level, they know our struggles and so they can help us. Um, so that's been really nice. I've really appreciated that. And then I'm taking one class here that is all Ecuadorian students and I am the only foreigner in that whole class. Um, and that class has been a real struggle, um, but that professor still has been great and very accommodating. Um, and I've learned a ton and I really have enjoyed that class specifically because it's not for foreigners, it's for national students. And so I just, I get to learn about a subject completely in context and I love it. It's been super, super cool. Definitely a Spanish immersion has been the best thing for my Spanish. I've come so incredibly far. Like I have recordings from the conversations that I did over the summer. Um, and so every now and then I'll I'll listen to a little bit of one of them and it's absolutely astounding just where I was and where I am now three months later like very clearly I still am not fluent um I still I make mistakes all the time but probably the biggest thing that I've learned is to be okay with making mistakes because that's how you learn language like I I forgot the word for sheet and I made that mistake but that makes me remember the word now so um Kind of that's the biggest thing that I've like learned here is that like mistakes aren't bad mistakes are how you learn the language so yeah so that's kind of a general overview of like my experience with learning Spanish um so now I'm just going to give you guys a couple of the tools that I really like to use learning and practicing my Spanish so the first thing is music I really love Spanish music um I really love reggaeton um, so CNCO, Shakira, Maluma, Osuna, um, that kind of music, I really love that. I really like that too, especially because the lyrics will get stuck in my head and then I'll be singing them all day and it kind of puts me in my like, thinking in Spanish brain and it's an easy way to get my brain to start thinking in Spanish again, especially after I've been speaking English for long periods of time. So music is probably like my number one favorite. I love listening to Spanish. My next probably biggest tool that I use the most often is books. I really love reading in Spanish. Um, 
because like I said, like my writing is really low. So reading not only like ups my reading comprehension, but I also kind of like, I'll always have like things in the back of my brain, like, oh, I saw that in a book. So I know to write it this way. And so that's been really, really helpful. Um, I really like to read books that I have already read and that I'm, I know the story, I'm familiar with it. So that way I kind of just, I know what's going on. And I, if I really don't understand something, then I can go back and I can look at the grammar structures of the vocabulary or the things that I'm not understanding. I also annotate my books. Um, so like, you can, I don't know if you can see, but like for vocabulary, like I write stuff that I don't know. Um, I write like the infinitive versions of verbs if they're in a weird tense, that kind of stuff. And that's been super, super helpful for me, especially for my writing. Um, watching TV shows in Spanish is fantastic. Netflix is a great, great resource. Um, but I would say that if you're going to do it, turn on your TV show in Spanish and turn on your subtitles in Spanish because then you can make those like audio connections with the written form and you can for sure understand what they're saying. And that's been really helpful. I'm not one of those people who can learn TV shows like through like just listening, but I really like to have the subtitles on the bottom in Spanish to go along with the TV show. Um, and kind of in that same vein for listening comprehension, um, podcasts are really great, especially if you're at a lower level. One of my favorites is called News in Slow Spanish. That one is great because you just, you listen to the news, so you get your news update, and then you also get some Spanish listening comprehension. Um, the hosts are really great, their accents are pretty minimal, so you can really, really focus on understanding, and if you miss a part, you can just swipe back, and it's super great and super easy. So I guess because I've spent so much time talking about Spanish, you guys probably want to hear me talk a little bit in Spanish. Um, Estoy un poquito nerviosa porque no, no he practicado nada de esto eh, y es un poquito, es un poquito raro. Me encanta el país de Ecuador y la ciudad de Quito es uno de mis ciudades favoritas en todo el mundo, eh, especialmente para aprender español porque el acento es, no es tan difícil de entender. Um, también la clima es como verano todo el tiempo. Me encanta la clima de Ecuador, de Quito. Um, sí. So that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Um, if there's anything that I talked about in this video that you want me to expand upon further, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and I will either reply to you directly or maybe I'll make a whole video about it. Who knows? Anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!